Psychic Radio is now CBS Radio's The Sky. Back to Behind the Paranormal with Paul and Ben Eno. Call now. 248-545-SOUL. New skyradio.com. What's the real origin of all this hype about the world ending at the end of this year? What does end of the world really mean, anyway? Who really knows? Hello there, and welcome to the 318th broadcast of Behind the Paranormal with Paul and Ben Eno. And those are some pretty important questions for all of us. So they came from, and those questions came from my co-host and partner in the paranormal, my dad. So over the past few years, we've had all sorts of guests who have been speculating about what is going to happen in 2012 and the years following. We've even done some ourselves. But... I don't think we've ever had a guest who says that nothing special is going to happen. Well, kind of refreshing in my opinion. Anyway, Dr. Christopher Keating is a professor of physics with 20 years experience, having published several scientific papers. His experience as a teacher includes nearly all topics in undergraduate physics, space science, and astronomy, and he's also served for over 30 years in the Navy and Naval Reserve, working principally as an analyst in naval intelligence. His years of duty include service in the Physics Department at the U.S. Naval Academy and mobilizations for Operations Desert Storm, Enduring Freedom, and Iraqi Freedom. In addition to writing, teaching, and doing research, Dr. Keating is busy as a single father raising a teenage son who is about to graduate uh, from high school and calls Texas his home. His book, Dialogues on 2012, Why the World Will Not End, was inspired by comments and questions from the classroom, public outreach, and from the community. His research for the book included studying authoritative texts about the Mayans, reading books advocating the Mayan mythos, watching numerous movies and television shows on the subject, and talking with the general public to hear what people have to say and ask. So, Dr. Keating, welcome to Behind the Paranormal. Thank you. Glad to be here. Very good. So So let's kick this off. Uh, Let's define our terms uh, before we even begin. So define end of the world. You know, that's a, that's a really good question because a lot of people are now saying that the world's not really going to end. It's, the world as we know it is going to end. And some people are even saying that what we're going to see is just a, a transformation. So really uh, what we're talking about when we say the end of the world is we can expect, according to these people, depending on who you talk to, some major event. Okay, because uh, I, I, for one, believe it's important to define what one believes in intelligently as well as uh, to reasonably define what one does not believe in. So that's why, they, hence the question. Anyway, go ahead, Ben. Sorry to interrupt. It's okay. So what's your understanding of the so-called uh, Mayan prophecy? Well, there was no Mayan prophecy to begin with, and that's one of the most ironic things about this is Everyone talks about the Mayan calendar coming to an end, and uh, the calendar isn't even Mayan. It was invented, it was first originated by the Olmec, and was around for a thousand years at least before the Maya even showed up on the scene. So that's one of the ironic things about it, is that uh, everyone keeps calling it this Mayan calendar, and it's actually Olmec. Hmm. The... The calendar, uh, and let's go ahead and just call it the Mayan calendar, and there's a number of them. The Mayans had calendars for everything. They were very time-oriented, and they had as many as 60 different calendars. The ones that we're most concerned about, though, are uh, this, this major one of over 5,000 years. And uh, by the count uh, that we now believe, it is starting to reach the end of that cycle. The problem with that is, is we aren't sure about that because it's a completely different calendar system than ours. You have to get a correlation between their calendar and our calendar. You say, okay, this day in our calendar is that day in their calendar. The common correlation used for this is called the GMT correlation, initials of the three men that worked it out. But that's not the only correlation, and it's actually – debated quite a bit in the community. So by the GMT correlation, this great cycle is coming to an end on December 21st. But if you go by other correlations, it's either already happened or it won't happen for hundreds of years yet to come. 
But that is the root of all of this, is that the idea that this great cycle is coming to an end uh, on December 21st. The Maya believed that everything kept repeating. And so when we come to the end of this, this great cycle, then they believed that that meant that everything would start all over again. And since this cycle began with the creation of the world and their religion, then that means that there will be a new creation at the beginning of the next cycle, which would start on December 22nd. That's the origin of all of this. Oh, all right. Well, so why don't you believe? Well, you kind of stated how you don't believe any of this will happen, but uh, there are a lot of other civilizations that also said the same thing. Yeah, according I have, to the, well, go ahead. I've, heard this. I've been told this many times, and the only references I can find to any of this is on the web pages and texts of the people who are pushing this mythos. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay. It reminds me if, uh, I don't know if you remember it back, uh, in the seventies and eighties, there was a popular saying, uh, story about how the head of the patent department in the 1800s, 1870s, I believe, wrote a letter to Congress saying that they should cancel the patent office because everything that could be invented had already been invented. Mm-hmm. This, I story, that. Yeah. this story made a really made the rounds a lot. And someone, I read a story, uh, uh, how this person investigated this, where'd this start? And when he went back and checked out this person, he found out that that's, that's not true. The guy wrote a letter to Congress protesting how they were going to, uh, cut his budget. And he made some comments that you guys act as if there's nothing left to be discovered, which was very different than the story. Very so, true. He yeah. started researching this, and what he found out is that everyone that repeated this was quoting someone else. Mm-hmm. And when he went to them, they quoted someone else. And he quoted and quoted, and he, and he finally it narrowed, kept narrowing down to a smaller and smaller group, and finally he found one person who had started this story, that this patent director had had made this statement. And so it was, it was something that he had just made up, and everyone else started quoting each other. You know, that is so very true. Uh, uh, it's ironic. I had it in military training and also in the seminary, the same experiment uh, whereby you're, you're in a group and, and one person whispers a, a statement to, to one and then it's passed on around the room and by the time he gets to the other room, it's entirely different. When I was so, in the Navy, we used to call up the, uh, the lookouts and uh, tell them some rumor and we'd wait to see how long it got around the show. <laughs> we did the same thing in the Coast Guard. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, memories. Well, anyway, uh, it, one does seem to think that these things proliferate. However, there is some evidence, and we have a lot of guests on the show who are uh, eminent people with PhD, you know, such as yourself, and, and others who are simply amateurs who have sharp minds and have researched this, who say that uh, the Hopi Indians and others, and we know some of them as well, have have stated uh, as do a number of cultures that, that that we have gone as it were from stone tools to power tools as many as four times in the history of the human race. So so that 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 history rather than being linear is cyclical, and uh, there seems to be some agreement on that. What's your opinion on that, that? That the fact that this sort of thing can happen, that there can be collapses for one reason or another, and rebuilding of of worlds over the long empty history of the human race. Certainly, if we just go and look at, uh, say, the Roman Empire, the Roman Empire built this truly a great empire. It was very advanced. And when the Roman Empire collapsed, Europe went into the appropriately called Dark Ages. Uh, and basically, Europeans lost all knowledge. The text and the knowledge of the Romans was transferred to the Arabs. And the Arabs kept it and built on it. And but Europe, it, it people couldn't read, couldn't write, didn't have scientific knowledge, and so they, you know, just collapsed as a civilization. Later, when the Renaissance started, the Middle Ages started, Europeans got this knowledge back from the Arabs. And they didn't rediscover it. So we see that absolutely something like this can happen. But let's also look at this this incident. The Roman Empire did not collapse overnight. 
it, it wasn't December 21st, 666 AD. <laughs> right. <clears throat> it, it took hundreds of years for the Roman Empire to collapse. So can, can civilization collapse again? Absolutely. It, it could happen, in, at least in theory. Uh, I think that we are far more advanced now uh, and we're more insulated from, from things like that. If say you know it's say Europe collapsed again like uh, a dark ages, well there's other parts of the world that are very advanced and uh, and I don't think that a dark ages like that could uh, occur again. It would take uh, something just really unimaginable for the whole human race to collapse into a dark ages again. Well, you did use the uh, the magic word advanced, something I always take exception with. Yes, how do you define advanced? I would define advanced uh, as being uh, above Stone Age, where you're starting to do things for yourself. You're, you aren't just living in, in a substance universe, in a substance society. You can do things better than what you can get from just nature alone. Okay. See, see my definition of advanced, and uh, with all, we go round and round with everybody about this, is not technological. It's spiritual and moral, and I feel that, that I'd rather be not at the mercy of – that's a, a poor choice of words – but I'd rather be associating with another civilization or other people who are – perhaps live in huts but are, but are spiritual and moral giants you know, philosophically and this sort of thing rather than a bunch of monkeys with car keys, okay, so to speak. So, but that, but but that, that that's aside from our point. But anyway, I, I always like to try and make make that point for whatever it's worth. Okay, now all all that being said, it seems to me that the human race has always been on the knife edge of oblivion, Doctor. I mean, pandemics, rogue asteroids, super volcanoes, not to mention the danger in the modern times of nuclear war, terrorism, rogue nukes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Isn't it just as presumptuous to say that the world won't end, however you define that, as to say that it will? All dates aside. To say that the world will never end, I think that would be uh, pretty presumptuous. But what kind of, if you're going to say all dates included, uh, five billion years from now, the sun is going to turn into a red giant and incinerate the earth. <clears throat> so, yeah, the earth really will end when that comes along. Five billion years from now, though, I can't imagine that there will be any humans remaining on the planet. So will our civilization come to an end? Certainly, I think it will eventually. But I don't think that this is a, a time frame that we need to worry about. Hundreds of thousands, even millions of years is, is the time frame I'm talking about. And okay. hopefully by that time we'll have spread to other planets around other stars and so on those planets ceases to exist, then our place will continue on other locations. Okay, uh, you seem to have a um, rather rosy picture compared with some people, but in any case, we have to take a break. You're listening to Behind the Paranormal with Paul and Benino on CBS New Sky Radio, NewSkyRadio.com. We'll be right back with our fascinating guest, Dr. Christopher Keating. Very shortly. Stay with us. Take CBS Radio The Sky with you wherever you go. Be sure to download the Radio.com app today from your mobile marketplace. And when you really want to know more, 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 be sure to visit NewSkyRadio.com. Get in deep with exclusive articles and Sky News. Get your weekly horoscope and the inside scoop on host events. Radio.com and NewSkyRadio.com. Stay connected. Somebody help, not just anybody help. You know, I need someone. Help. Life's a game. Win. Call and get advice from today's top coaches that are here to help you run a business, offer legal advice, enrich your relationships, or guide you on the right career path. Our coaches are expert professionals in their field to help you win the game of life. Listen to Coach Me Radio Monday through Friday at 5 p.m. Psychic Radio is now CBS Radio's The Sky. Back to Behind the Paranormal with Paul and Ben Eno. Call now 248 545 Soul. New SkyRadio.com. 
Hello and welcome back to Behind the Paranormal with Paul and Ben Eno. And we are discussing with our guest, uh, Dr. Keating, how the world may not end in 2012. And so we're going to move on to another question. So, Dr. Keating, what's your response to those people who say that, oh, well, the end of the world as we know it means there'll be a rediscovery of consciousness and human unity and things like that? Well, the main question is, is just exactly how do you think this is going to come about? I hear yeah. all sorts of stories, galactic waves, uh, galactic alignments, all these kinds of things. And the problem with all of these is that there's simply no basis to them. Uh, I read uh, a book by someone you guys had mentioned, uh, Heaven's Wave by uh, D'Arlon. And the basis of the book, and it's an interesting book. It's a fun book. Entertainment value is good. It's a fiction book, and it has a good entertainment value. The science is, uh, well, there's some, some errors in the science. And the basis of the book, uh, spoiler alert, is a galactic wave that occurs when the Earth, the Earth's solar system lines up with the galactic plane of the Milky Way. And the problem with this, of course, is, well, there's really no galactic plane. And if there was one, we'd be somewhere between 60 and 70 light years above it, a uh, million years away from crossing this galactic plane. And this is one of the common uh, claims that there's going to be this galactic plane and it's going to result in whatever kind of uh, event that you wish to come up with. You want some of them are literally destroying the planet, others just cataclysms, and some are saying there's going to be these metaphysical transformations. So my my answer to all of these is, what is your basis for saying that any of these things are going to happen? The devil is in the details. Anyone doing any kind of homework on this stuff will quickly find out that there just simply isn't any substance to these claims. Hmm. One of the um, issues that, that does seem to be occurring, uh, well, this exists on several levels, there does seem to be some astronomical evidence, and I've spoken with, with uh, astronomers who are, at times reluctant to talk about it and, and, and who say they really don't know what it means but that there is a uh, and this is one of the things that 2012 people point to, a flattening out of the galactic neighborhood right? and the increased phenomena of, electromagnet, of an electromagnetic nature and they'll say uh, and the odd thing about it is the thing that makes me nervous is that there is some evidence and I, I've done a lot of research on this that, that electromagnetic energy uh, ele- uh, electropollution, as it's sometimes called, can affect human behavior. And uh, w- regardless of any events that may or may not happen, this this does seem to be happening. I don't know how much of it's affecting human behavior, but there are electromagnetic anomalies taking place that, that we have not seen before. Um, whether it means anything is 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 a big question. But the, again, of course, there are always things going on uh, in the galactic neighborhood. But this. I don't know, to us, it, it says that perhaps um, increased activity of some kind is occurring. Uh, I've worked in psychiatric hospitals where I've actually seen uh, people, you know, really getting loony at the time of the full moon. I mean, that's really true. It affects the tides. It affects, you know, human behavior and in the sense of electromagnetic flux and all this business. So, uh, I mean, what say you on this? I mean, uh, this, there, there, there do seem to be a lot of... Uh, increases in, in reports of paranormal activity from our perspective, things of this kind. Well, what say you, I mean, about all this? Do you think that's um, baloney, or have you noticed in any sort of uh, validity to electromagnetic uh, phenomena of this kind? Well, I think uh, psychic activity, that's, I don't want to use the term baloney because when you say psychic activity, you're encompassing a, just a gigantic concept. Uh, if you want to say anything that we don't understand and classify it as psychic, okay, and some people do. You don't think that there's all of these uh, psychic activities going on. That's that's really nonsense. Uh, the full moon effect, you know, you just said that you've witnessed it yourself. Well, there's been many studies by psychologists, by scientists, by 
police departments, by the FBI, and all of them come back and say there is no measurable change in people's behavior with the full moon. Um, so it's, and this is one of the, the issues, is people go out here and they want to see something, they expect to see something, and so they do see it. And that's, that's one of the false arguments that you get. As for flattening, that's one of the issues I've heard is that there's a flattening of the, the solar system, that the planets don't all orbit in the same plane around the sun, and now it's flattening out. And that's uh, that's completely false. The planets orbit in, in a almost perfect plane around the, uh, the the sun. It's called the plane of the ecliptic. And uh, if you go to the astronomy picture of the day, there are some really great pictures. Uh, go in there and do a search for uh, plane of the ecliptic. And uh, they have lots of these great pictures where they have a number of the planets in the sky. And you can see that they just they just line up and make this wonderful line. And so the, the, the Earth's solar system, the sun's solar system, is very much a flat plane. In fact, that is one of the hints that we have on how the solar system was formed is that it's so flat and everything rotates the same way and rotates on its axis the same way and all these kinds of things. So there's no, no flattening of the, uh, of the astronomical universe that has been reported. Now, well, like, increased, increased electromagnetic activity, uh, there is one thing that has been increasing. It's a thing called Schumann resonance. Yeah, right. Schumann, and this has been misreported uh, a lot. Uh, it's been recorded as being electromagnetic waves from the galaxy. I've even heard it called the heartbeat of the galaxy. And none of that is accurate. Schumann waves are electromagnetic waves caused by lightning in our atmosphere. We have the ionosphere high in the atmosphere, which is a charged region of the atmosphere. And the Earth, uh, the surface of the Earth is a conductor. And so when lightning makes these electromagnetic waves, they bounce between the Earth and the ionosphere, and they echo all around the, the world. And there are peaks in these frequencies, uh, and those are called Schumann resonances, named after the man who first calculated them. And they're very difficult to, to measure because they're very, very thin. It takes very sensitive instruments to go and measure them. But we do measure them, and what we've seen is that uh, some of these resonances have been increasing in frequency. This is attributed to climate change. We believe that uh, these resonances are dependent on temperature, and it is being proposed that we may be able to use Schumann resonances to go and measure the temperature of the world atmosphere as a, a whole unit. Okay. Uh, I, I respect that very much, although I, I'm rather shocked to hear you say that the, uh, the, the, the uh, plane of the ecliptic is a constant because uh, as, as I... And when we were all kids, we all had, <clears throat> at least those of us interested in the subject, had a, you know, the uh, map of the solar system on our walls in the bedroom and had those all flat and the planets were all lined up. But I, I was always given to believe in undergraduate and graduate studies that that was not literally the case. And, uh, it's not, it's which not is why NASA sent out all these, these craft, uh, in, you know, the 70s and 80s to try and catch this lineup. And so, because it was easy to, you know, for the, for, the, for the probe to go up one planet to the next without having to go to the... You know what I'm saying. And and was that, that all wrong? Did I get that all wrong? No, you, you're absolutely correct on that. Uh, but that was... Uh, the Borger craft used what was called the Grand Tour. Sure. And the reason that we needed to send it at that time was because those probes got what's known as a gravitational assist from the planets. <clears throat> we didn't... We couldn't make a rocket powerful enough to go and leave the solar system. And so we had to get, you know, an extra kick. And we got that by uh, doing a slingshot around the planets. And so you come up and you get a slingshot from, say, Jupiter, and it will sling you on into the solar system. Well, if Saturn was lined up just right, you could slingshot from Jupiter to Saturn and get a slingshot from Saturn to go even faster and go farther. If they weren't lined up, then your slingshot from Jupiter would go out, and, and that would be it. Mm -hmm. During the 70s and 80s, the planets were lined up just right so that we could slingshot from one to the next to the next to the next, right on out to, to Pluto was the original plan. But uh, they changed it, and they uh, 
so that we can look at two very interesting moons around one around Saturn and one around uh, um, Neptune. Mm -hmm. And so we sacrifice looking at Pluto to go and look at those two moons. Sure. Okay. Well, I certainly certainly grasp your point, uh, and certainly anything astronomical takes uh, great you know, great lengths of time compared with our, uh, our our standards of time. Certainly. So obviously, any kind of dates would be irrelevant, you know, pretty much. Well, in any case, uh, we uh, have to take a break, I believe, here uh, commercial break, and we'll be right back. You're listening to Behind the Paranormal. With Paul and Ben Eno on CBS News Sky Radio and our fascinating guest, Dr. Christopher Keating, discussing what will or will not happen in 2012. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Thursday is a power-packed day here on the sky. Join us at noon for the I'm Thankful Network. At 1 p.m., it's the Dr. Pat Show. At 4 p.m., Colette Baron reed takes the stage for the Colette Baron reed Show. The Colette Baron reed Show, where intuition, practical spirituality, great advice, a little woo-woo fun, and fabulosity meet. Colette Baron reed is an internationally renowned intuitive counselor, educator, and best-selling author who helps others recognize and connect with their own intuition, potential, and purpose. Powerful motivational speaker, charismatic broadcast personality, and acclaimed performer, storyteller, and recording artist, Colette uses her extraordinary spiritual gifts to empower her clients to live a life that is awake and authentic, and to create a reality that is spiritual, deliberate, and meaningful. Call in early. The lines are hot. 248-545-7685. Instant feedback at NewSkyRadio.com. New Sky Radio. NewSkyRadio.com. New Horizons, No Boundaries. Powered by CBS, Yahoo, and Radio.com.
is now CBS Radio's The Sky. Back to Behind the Paranormal with Paul and Ben Eno. Call now. 248 545 Soul. New SkyRadio.com. Believe. Okay, and we are back behind the paranormal with Paul and Ben Eno, and we are talking with our guest, Dr. Christopher Keating, physicist, who is explaining his point his point of view on why things will not happen as people expect them to in 2012. Now, certainly, Doctor, to continue our conversation, you know, the social aspects of this are quite, um, quite, I suppose, disconcerting at times when people get to believe things and, and it becomes a sort of a, a herd response. I remember, and what, well, I don't remember, I'm not that old, but in 1000 AD, people went trooping to the tops of mountains because of the date they thought the world was going to end, Christ was going to come back, and all this business. Uh, what say you about the social aspects of all this? That was actually the motivation behind writing this book. Um, there's been quite a bit of negative social reaction People come up to me and some have been very concerned. I've even heard of people talking about uh, suicidal friends, uh, suicidal oh, children. Ugh. These are all very negative. And uh, also, quite frankly, a lot of these people that are pushing this stuff are just snake oil salesmen. I think there are some of the people out there that truly believe what they're saying. I think there's also a group of people who aren't really sure and they're kind of repeating what they've heard. But there is definitely a group out here who they don't care, they don't know. All they're doing is taking people's money. And right. this is a way to do it. Yeah. Well, you know, I, th- I think you have a point there. Uh, as you can imagine, we, uh, even though this is a very serious show, as I hope you can tell, we, um, you know, we're not the uh, feral ghost hunters and all the silliness that's going on. We try to be, uh, to take a very feet on the ground approach to all this. But we nevertheless, you run into all kinds of people who um, just just d- d- don't sort of sort of match up snake oil salesmen, as you say. But on the other hand, maybe it's my philosophical education. But I just uh, in journal of thirty two years, I ended up after I finished with a seminary and got nowhere. I ended up a journalist for thirty years, newspaper journalist. And I began. I, I sort of adopted an attitude: be careful what you don't believe. Be just as careful of that as as, as of what you believe, because things often uh, would 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 come around that just were unbelievable but turned out to be true. In the case of daily journalism, it was in one day uh, the heavyweight champion of the world uh, showing up at this little bar in the middle of nowhere in Rhode Island, and I, went, I got to interview him, and he never talked to the press. So that was a real coup. Things like that. You know, just be careful what not to believe. But, but at uh, the same time, you did your homework, right? Oh, at the same time, yeah, true. That's what I'm saying. Well, my homework was in that case was uh, I grabbed somebody from the advertising department because I didn't I knew about as much about uh, boxing as I did about uh, the care of June bugs. So he instructed me. I did my homework in about five minutes on the way to the place in the car, but I, I managed to get through it. But you're right; one does have to consider all angles and and do uh, do one's homework. Well, as a, is, when you got these stories in journalism, and these stories seem to be just too incredible to be true. You, you know, your, what your warning is, don't throw them out. But at the same time, weren't there stories that were too incredible to be true when you checked them out? They really were too incredible to be true? Oh, yes, sure. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, you know, again, all this being said, uh, I just... Uh, tend to be a bit nervous by, you know, uh, if one watches the news, and of course journalism is not what it used to be, either broadcast or print, and, but one does have, uh, I, I don't know, perhaps maybe 10% of the information about what's actually going on. You, you know that from, from the yes. military experience. Right. Uh, and the public uh, has to go on that. Uh, when the press focuses on such things as this uh, uh, prophecy, so-called, and all this business, uh, when the History Channel uh, discusses not history, but all this this business and UFOs, you know, 80% of the time, and I have the greatest respect for the History Channel, I'm on it frequently, and uh, but I just, you know, one does worry about the social aspects of this. What would be your advice for parents whose children are afraid? I would sit down with them and do the homework. When people say the world is going to end or there's going to be some terrible event or this or that, sit down with them and say, okay, this is what that person said. Let's go and let's get on the Internet and see what is really the truth. For instance, when they say 
that there is going to be a galactic alignment. Let's go and see. Will there really be a galactic alignment? And in fact, no, there is no galactic alignment. Never was, never will be. Okay. Can I interrupt you here? We have the Urlon, I believe, on the line here. This ought to be interesting. Uh, we'll go ahead and put him through. Um, the Urlon, are you with us? I am, Paul. After many attempts, I've been trying for about 15 minutes to get through. Oh, obviously some dark government plot is when we talk about UFOs. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, okay, very good. Well, let me introduce you to Dr. Christopher Keating, uh, who uh, was talking about your book before. Apparently he's read it. Why don't you two just um, sort of talk about this? I mean, you, you obviously disagree. Uh, well, not, no, uh, not entirely. That's the first thing okay. I want to say. Dr. Keating, I, I entirely agree with you about the world and the Mayans, who did not say that is not the prophecy that the world is going to end this year. Um, I, I, there are two Mayans who actually live near me, uh, one of whom's uh, father is a shaman, uh, actually still lives in Yucatan. And the first thing they say is, uh, you know, December 21st is just the end of our calendar, and the world isn't going to end, but we do believe that the world as we know it, as you've already stated, is going to end, which means that there are going to be tremendous changes taking place. So in a way, I agree with your main basis. Well, uh, with that statement, I'd have to ask you, what do you mean by the world is going to end? Because according to one of the foremost scholars of the Maya, uh, Michael Coe at Yale University, uh, the Maya did make predictions that the world was going to end. It's, he has it in his uh, a couple of his books. In fact, he, unfortunately, uh, was the, uh, the the guy that got all this started. He wrote a very popular book in the late 60s uh, on the Maya. And, uh, and he talked about this. And that's when uh, people like um, uh, Arguelles and the professional psychic drug takers I don't, I'm not saying that disparagingly. They were professional psychic drug takers. And they got into this, and they started talking about the end of this Mayan calendar. But it started with Michael Coe. And, well, I, uh, I and don't really he, agree with many drug takers, but I'll, I'll go ahead. Well, you know, uh, John Major, Major Jenkins, uh, Callahan, Arguelles, these guys would travel around through the rainforest and take all these different psychotropic drugs. And then they would go on the lecture circuit and talk about their experiences taking these drugs. So I'm, and, you know, they wrote books. They lectured about it. They went on shows about it. So I'm, I'm not saying this in a disparaging way. They were professional drug takers. Um, and they got their start with Michael Coe. Hey, gentlemen, I have to interrupt you briefly. We're going to take another break, but we'll be right back uh, with a, a bit of a spontaneous discussion here between the Irland author of Heaven's Wave and... Dr. Christopher Keating, author of Dialogues on 2012. We'll be right back on CBS New Sky Radio, NewSkyRadio.com, Behind the Paranormal with Paul and Ben Eno. Stay with us. New Sky Radio, NewSkyRadio.com, and Psychic Radio, PsychicOnAir.com, powered by CBS Radio, AOL, and Yahoo, is unlike any talk radio station, with a mission to improve the world one listener at a time. This is where you can be the star of your own show. Our listeners are truly unique, truly interactive, and passionate about their world. The Sky and Psychic Radio listeners genuinely care about the environment, social justice, their personal health, and raising people up to live their best life every day. Our motto is New Horizons, No Boundaries. New Age Views, Life Coaching, Psychic Analysis, Alternative Medicine, and Cutting Edge Mind, Body, and Spirit shows can all be found on The Sky and Psychic Radio. Perhaps you have what it takes to join our broadcast family, an open mind, a great idea, and a passion for enriching lives. Check out all the exciting details by clicking the microphone on our homepage page at NewSkyRadio.com or give Lisa Rodman a call at 248-546-9600 to learn just how affordable it can be to host a show.
CBS Radio's The Sky. Back to Behind the Paranormal. With Paul and Ben Eno. Call now. 248-545-SOL. New SkyRadio.com. And we're back with our guest, Dr. Christopher Keating, physicist, and uh, a spontaneous call from our good friend Dierlon, author of Heaven's Wave. And uh, we're discussing what may or may not happen in 2012. We only have a few minutes left, and we're going to do a new show uh, just with these these two fine fellows uh, as guests. But uh, why don't you continue your conversation uh, where, where we left off, if, if you would, please. I've completely forgotten where we left off. <laughs> okay. Well, you, you, had, you had several points of agreement, but uh, during the break, uh, dear Alon, you said that uh, you knew two physicists who might, might disagree with Dr. Keating on his analysis of the situation. Yes. One is, one is I don't know if he knows him or not, Ronald Malay of the University of Connecticut. No, and uh, the other one who, who is a very good friend of mine, he lives three blocks from me, he does not wish to be outwardly, he also works for a Connecticut university. His first name is Larry, and... We belong to several groups together, and we've discussed this several times. And he, he um, uh, both agree that this is it, uh, there isn't the world is not going to end in, in 2012, and I don't believe it is. And, and uh, as I've said, uh, my my a good friend. There are two Mayans who live in my town too. Uh, their father, uh, the father of one of them, is a Mayan shaman, and also does not believe the world is going to end. But they believe there are going to be tremendous changes in the next 12 to 24 months in the world. I and don't I know disagree. what they are, by the way. I don't know what those. And I, I think and I disagree with all that. Uh, there's going to be changes. There's going to be events. There's going to be good things and bad things that happen this year. But that's simply because that kind of stuff happens every year. To go and say that there's going to be changes this year, that's kind of, you know, that's a foregone conclusion. We're having a presidential election this year. So there's going to be, you know, next year there's going to be a big change no matter who wins the election. If Obama wins re-election or the Republicans win the election, there's going to be a big change starting next year. And so is that because we hit December 21st, 2012? No. No, These no, not at all. It happens all the time. Yeah, change and does so, happen all the time, but they, they honestly believe that these changes are going to be catastrophic. Not, not oh, I shouldn't say catastrophic. Uh, ma- huge changes. Of it won't. Culturally, it won't cultural changing changes. Uh, you, you can come out and say, well, Jesus Christ is going to return to earth, and there's no way you can argue that. You, uh, God will send Jesus when he's ready to do that, and there's no scientific evidence one way or the other. But if you're going to come out and say that there's a scientific reason, there's a astronomical region, reason, there's a geophysical reason, there simply is no science whatsoever to support that there's going to be any kind of major event this year. Well, my my research indicates different, and and, and I will admit I am not a scientist, but uh, having talked to to several astronomers and some physicists on this, they, they don't think the world is going to end. I, I agree with you on that, but uh, it, uh, one of them believes at least that there there's enough. Uh, and I don't know quite how to, as I say, I'm not a scientist, but there's enough electromagnetic energy beaming in at us, so to speak, and it's not coming all at once. It's been building for years, and once uh, 2014 is over, it will begin to dissipate, but it can have effects on weak minds, much as the full moon effect has. Well, we've been through that, but go ahead, Dr. Keith. <laughs> we, we did 
discuss the Schumann resonances, and uh, that's from lightning in the atmosphere. We are not being bombarded with great amounts of electromagnetic radiation from outside the planet. Um, and certainly, uh, one of the things you talked about in your book is that the, the sun is warming. And in fact, all of our satellite data shows that the sun has been cooling since the um, mid to late 70s. It's on a long-term cooling trend. Nothing to be concerned about. The, the amount of variation we're talking about is very small, and it takes very good instruments to measure it. But we see that when we go and look at the facts, when you look at the scientific evidence, that, in fact, these things aren't happening. Now, can I go out here and find a, a, a bona fide scientist to go and, and basically say anything I want to hear? The answer is yes. I can also go out and find any kind of bona fide uh, medical doctor to tell me anything I want to hear. That is not proof. The proof is, what does the scientific community say? We can find extremists in any topic, not just science, but in any topic, to tell us whatever it is we want to hear. Right, gentlemen, I'm, afraid, I'm, I'm awfully sorry. I'm afraid I'm going to have to interrupt. We're just flat out of time. We are right. definitely going to reschedule the, the duel of the authors here at, at, for a, at <laughs> some time as soon as possible. So please watch our website for that, and we'll certainly announce it. Gentlemen, thank you very much, Dr. Keating, especially thank you. And the airline, our good friend, uh, thank you so much uh, for calling in. And we will do this again very soon. All right. Thank and, you. Uh, uh, let, let me just mention the book again. Certainly, Dr. Keating, Dialogues on 2012. D just you take a second and just tell us where people can get it. I can get it Amazon.com. You can get it on uh, on Barnes and Noble, and uh, you can also uh, get it to Dog Ear Publishing. Okay, excellent. And the airline certainly heavens wave. We talk about that a lot, so the, we'll, we'll <laughs> let you go. Okay, so. Um, Everyone, if you live in southeastern New England, Ben and I are teaching a course once more starting in April, April 14th, on exploring the paranormal. Uh, five weeks, including two field trips, and that should be interesting. Check it out, southcoastlearning.org. Also, check out uh, my books. You can get four of them uh, on uh, barnesandnoble.com, Barnes, uh, Barnes and Noble Nook, e-reader, and Kindle, of course, and also the Kindle Fire. Uh, Faces at the Window, Footsteps in the Attic, and Turning Home, God, Ghosts, and Human Destiny, as well as Rhode Island, a genial history for those of you who are history buffs. So many thanks <coughs> to our producer, Will Kosnick, and we will see you next Sunday, February 19th, when my dad and I will welcome two guests on a subject many of you have been talking about, uh, those strange noises that have been reported around the world coming from the sky or the ground, people aren't really sure, with with us will be the investigative report investigative journalist Linda Moulton Howe and Larry Warren. No, Larry Lowe. Oh, Larry Lowe. Sorry, yeah. uh, Larry Warren. It's, is a it's, of... it's it's a it's a long it's a long day. It's been a long yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so TV and he's also a TV and radio host and editor of the Phoenix UFO Examiner. So in the meantime, tune into our New England Drive Time Show on W O N twelve forty A M and O N Worldwide dot com at six PM Eastern every. Time uh, Eastern Time every Monday. And you can okay. always get free podcasts of all our shows along with show schedules and guest information at www.behindtheparanormal.com. Thank you, Ben. And we leave you with an interesting thought from science fiction author Frank Herbert. Quote, if enough of us believe, a new thing can be made to exist. Belief structure creates a filter through which chaos is sifted into order. Thanks for Unquote. joining us. Thanks for joining us in our Creek Cosmic Journey. We will see you next time.